हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू टू ई पी जी पाठशाला माई नेम इज डॉक्टर अमित कटोच एंड आई एम वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन यूनिवर्सिटी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ होटल एंड टूरिज्म मैनेजमेंट ऑफ पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी डेयर स्टूडेंट्स आई वुड बी टेकिंग द मॉड्यूल ऑन डेंजरस गुड्स एंड रूल्स फॉर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन अंडर द पेपर कार्गो ऑपरेशंस एंड मैनेजमेंट आफ्टर द मॉड्यूल द स्टूडेंट्स विल बी एबल टू नो अबाउट वॉट आर डेंजरस गुड्स क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ डेंजरस गुड्स पैकिंग ग्रुप्स ऑफ डेंजरस गुड्स पैकिंग ऑप्शंस मार्किंग एंड लेबलिंग डॉक्यूमेंटेशन डेंजरस गुड्स शिपर्स रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी मिस डिक्लेयर्ड और अनडिक्लेयर्ड डेंजरस गुड्स डेंजरस गुड्स एक्सीडेंट्स एंड इंसिडेंट्स फर्स्टली आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट इंट्रोडक्शन डेंजरस गुड्स आर आइटम्स विद पैरिलियस प्रॉपर्टीज दैट मे थ्रेटन द सेफ्टी ऑफ पीपल एंड ट्रेवलर्स ऑन द बोर्ड दीज गुड्स इफ नॉट हैंडल्ड प्रॉपरली मे पोज life risk of human beings as well as animals as these are made from mixture of many toxic and lethal chemicals the international civil aviation organization that is icao or the local civil aviation authority regulations govern their carriage on board aircraft the regulations are responsible for the correct classification of the goods shipper the diversification and various other types of dangerous goods are mentioned in dgr section prior precautions and advice should be taken about the various classifications and substances from the manufacturer or distributor of the substance also classification may be performed by an accredited laboratory or from legal authority the ita has developed such an industry that ensures the safe handling of those dangerous goods in air shipping ikao in particular with iata provides safety and security needs outstanding training technical knowledge of products and services the standard of these needs and facilities have achieved a high level and they maintain the same in order to satisfy the needs of the industry and safe transportation of the dangerous goods by air training of the cabin crew members in the transport of dangerous goods are inscribed in annex 6 that is operation of aircraft part 1 international commercial air transport aeroplanes and the detailed description and elaboration of the training requirements are addressed in dangerous goods training program contained in annex 18 that is the safe transport of dangerous goods by air and the icao technical instructions for the safe transport of dangerous goods by air document 9284 in india dgca issues strict rules and regulations with the association of icao and iata the aircraft carriage of dangerous goods rules 2003 has been laid down by dgca to aid carriage of dangerous goods for both national and international aircrafts operating in india now i will discuss about what are dangerous goods dangerous goods are materials or items with hazardous properties that may endanger the safety of an aircraft or persons on board the aircraft and could be dangerous 
in transportation. Some common items and materials from household or work, other substances from industrial chemicals may harm the passengers, air crew and craft. According to ICAO, dangerous goods are articles or substances which are capable of posing a risk to health, safety, property or the environment and which are shown in the list of dangerous goods in the technical instructions or which are classified according to those instructions. Anything that contain harmful and toxic gases, petrol such as lawn movers, chainsaws, brush cutters, model aircraft etc., batteries, fireworks, sparklers are the common materials of our household objects including pesticides, acids, aerosols, perfumes, bleaches, matches, cigarette lighters, camping stoves with liquid fuel or compressed gas which are dangerous. Dangerous goods are transported regularly and routinely by air. To ensure the safety overall, there are international standards that aim and try to not put aircraft at risk, which each state under the provisions of the Chicago Convention are required to introduce into national legislation. This legislation gives the full right and control to the government and makes responsible for safety and harmonization of the aircraft and safety standards. Now I will discuss about the classification of dangerous goods. Though the international standards of safety are used worldwide and have a significant role in the airlines, we need to stress upon the ICAO standards that are actually in the use form published by International Air Transport Association that is IATA as the dangerous goods regulations. Dangerous goods are also called hazardous materials or hazmat for short and include dry ice, explosives, flammable materials or substances, lithium batteries and chemicals. Some examples of common items that qualify as dangerous goods that most people fail to recognize are certain combustible oils, nail polish and perfume. These items are flammable and require proper packaging for shipment. We commonly think of dangerous goods being shipped by chemical companies, gas companies and pharmaceutical companies or research labs but the truth is any type of company may have the need for shipping hazardous materials or dangerous goods at some point including cosmetics, retailers and food companies. Now I will discuss about the packing groups. The dangerous goods are classified in accordance to ICAO, IATA, UNO and DGCA. These are implemented from time to time as per the present scenario and status. In India, the rules regarding classification packaging and labeling of hazardous material has been given under the sections 6, 8 and 25 of the Environment Protection Act 1896 and the Hazardous Substances Rules 2011 of the central government. The dangerous or hazardous goods are classified into nine types or categories. Class 1 includes explosives. These comprises explosive articles, frenzied substances and pyrotechnic devices. 
क्लास वन इज कैटेगराइज इंटू सिक्स डिविजन डिविजन वन आर्टिकल्स एंड सबस्टांसिस है मास एक्सप्लोजन हैजर्ड दैट इज अ मास एक्सप्लोजन इज वन विच अफेक्ट्स ऑलमोस्ट द इंटायर लोड वर्चुअली और इंस्टेंटेनियसली डिविजन टू इंक्लूड्स आर्टिकल्स एंड सबस्टांसिस है प्रोजेक्शन हैजर्ड but not a mass explosion hazard division 3 of the class 1 includes articles and substances having a fire hazard and either a minor blast hazard or a minor projection hazard or both but not a mass explosion hazard this division comprises articles and substances that may give rise to considerable radiant heat or burn one after another producing minor blast and or projection effects division 4 of class 1 include articles and substances that present no significant hazard this division comprises articles and substances which present only a small hazard in the event of ignition or initiation during transport the effects are largely confined to the package and no projection of fragments of appreciable size or range is to be expected an external fire must not cause virtually instantaneous explosion of almost the entire contents of the package Division five of the class one dangerous substances are very insensitive substances having a mass explosion hazard, which are so insensitive that there is very little probability of initiation or of transition from burning to detonation under normal conditions of transport. Division six of class one dangerous substances includes extremely insensitive articles which do not have a mass explosion hazard. This division comprises articles which contain only extremely insensitive detonating substances and which demonstrate a negligible probability of accidental initiation or propagation. Class two dangerous substances include the gases. Division one include flammable gas, gases which ignite on contact with an ignition source such as acetylene and hydrogen. Division two of class two substances are non-flammable gases, gases which are neither flammable nor poisonous. Category three of class two substances are poisonous gases. gases liable to cause death or serious injury to humans if inhaled for example hydrogen cyanide class 3 includes flammable liquids these includes petrol alcohol and perfume it includes the following substances flammable liquids and liquid desensitized explosives class 4 includes flammable solids it includes flammable solids substances liable to spontaneous combustion substances which in contact with water emit flammable gases this class has three divisions division 1 of the class 4 include flammable solids solids which under conditions encountered in transport are readily combustible or may cause or contribute to fire through friction self reactive substances which are liable to undergo a strongly exothermic reaction desensitized explosives which may explode if not diluted sufficiently it contains flammable solids self reactive substances and solid desensitized explosives Division 2 of class 4 include substances which are liable to spontaneous heating under normal conditions encountered in transport 
or to heating up in contact with air and being then liable to catch fire. The following types of substances are classified in this division pyrophoric substances and self-heating substances. Division 3 of class 4 includes substances which in contact with water emit flammable gases that is dangerous when wet substances which by interaction with water are liable to become spontaneously flammable or to give off flammable gases in dangerous quantities. Class 5 includes oxidizing substances and organic peroxides. Oxidizing substances are substances which in themselves are not necessarily combustible but may generally cause or contribute to the combustion of other material by yielding oxygen. Such substances may be contained in an article. The class 5 is divided into two divisions. Division 1 comprises oxidizing substances that is oxidizing agents which are not organic such as ammonium nitrate and chemical oxygen generators. Division 2 of class 5 include organic peroxides which are thermally unstable substances that may undergo heat generating, self-accelerating decomposition. These substances are sensitive to impact or friction or may create a dangerous reaction when in contact with other substances. These substances may be explosive and burn rapidly. Some examples are fertilizers and pool chemicals. Class 6 category comprises toxic and infectious substances. Its division 1 comprises toxic substances which are liable to cause death or injury or to harm human health if swallowed, inhaled or contacted by the skin. It should be noted that toxins from plant, animal or bacterial sources which do not contain any infectious substances or toxins that are contained in substances which are not infectious substances should be considered for classification in Division 1 of Class 6 and assignment to UN 3172. The class 6 is divided into two divisions. Division 1 comprises of toxic substances, those substances which are liable to cause death or injury if swallowed, inhaled or absorbed through the skin. Examples are pesticides and poisons, mercury. Division 2 of class 6 comprises infectious substances those known to contain or reasonably expected to contain pathogens such as bacteria, viruses, medical waste such as used needles. Class 7 comprises the radioactive materials. Radioactive materials means any material containing radionuclides where both the activity concentration and the total activity in the consignment exceed the values specified in DGR regulations. The following radioactive materials are not included in class 7 for the purposes of these regulations. That is radioactive material implanted or incorporated into a person or live animal for diagnosis or treatment, radioactive material in consumer products which have received regulatory approval following their sale to the end user, natural material and ores containing naturally occurring radionuclides which are either in their natural state or have only been processed for purposes other than for 
extraction of the radionuclides and not intended to be processed for use of these radionuclides provided the activity concentration of the material does not exceed 10 times the values specified in DGR regulations. Non-radioactive solid objects Class 8 comprises corrosives which are substances which by chemical action can cause severe damage when in contact with living tissue or in the case of leakage will materially damage or even destroy other goods or the means of transport. Corrosive substances can dissolve organic tissues or severely corrode certain metals for example hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid contained in batteries. Class 9 comprises miscellaneous substances which presents a danger during air transportation that is not covered by other classes. These include aviation regulated soiled or liquid substances with anesthetic, noxious or similar properties which could cause extreme annoyance or discomfort to crew members so as to prevent the correct performance of assigned duties. Semi-processed polymeric articles impregnated with a flammable gas or liquid as a blowing agent, they may evolve small quantities of flammable gas. Carbon dioxide solid dry ice has a temperature of 79 degrees centigrade. Danger on sublimation, it produces a gas heavier than air which is an enclosed area and in larger quantities can lead to suffocation or cold burn. Magnetized material, any material which when packed for air transport has a maximum magnetic field strength sufficient to cause a compass deflection of more than 2 degrees at a distance of 2.1 meter from any point on the surface of the assembled package, the magnetic field strength at the compass producing a 2 degree deflection is taken to be 0.418 A oblique M or 0.00525 Gauze. Examples included in this class are abastos, carbon dioxide, solid, dry ice, consumer commodity, chemical and first aid kits, life saving appliances, engines, internal combustion, battery powered equipment or vehicles, zinc, diethonite etc. Passengers and cabin crew members are permitted to carry a limited amount of classified dangerous goods for personal use in their carry-on baggage such as toiletry articles example perfume, nail polish, nail polish remover, small lithium and lithium ion batteries such as those found in portable electronic devices, alcoholic beverages with an alcohol content of less than 70%. It should be noted that the types of items that are authorized on board the aircraft may vary in each country depending on the local aviation authority and security regulations. Other classified dangerous goods that are permitted in the cabin include emergency equipment in accordance with airworthiness regulations such as oxygen, fire extinguishers, CO2 gas cylinders to inflate the life vests accepted in the cabin, the discovery of the following items in the cabin must be considered as a dangerous goods incident as the items 
below are strictly prohibited for transport in the cabin such as explosives which includes fireworks flares toy gun caps compressed gases which include filled or partly filled aqua lung cylinders including camping gas cylinders flammable liquids and solid that is lighter fuel non safety matches paints thinner fire lighters oxidizers such as some bleaching powders organic peroxides such as some types of solid hydrogen peroxide poisons such as arsenic cyanide and weed killer irritating materials which include tear gas devices infectious substances which include live virus materials radioactive materials which includes medical or research samples which contain radioactive sources corrosives include acids alkalis wet cell type car batteries caustic soda magnetized materials include instruments containing magnets now i will discuss about the packing options the cargo handler or the transporter will not ship the goods or materials until and unless there is a proper packaging and safety or is non suitable for transformation hence the provider or the manufacturer must check and ensure that the goods are harmoniously packed and are ready for carriage the accountability of the packaging along with the regulations falls on the shipper completely shippers specific responsibility during packaging is when preparing the package of dangerous goods the shipper must abide by the packing requirements to be used and use only the packaging permitted and specified further the quantity per package should be restricted to the limits as described in h j or l of the dangerous goods congregate all the components and make sure the external surface is free of any type of contamination generally the packaging groups can be broadly categorized into three types that is packaging group 1 great danger packaging group 2 medium danger packaging group 3 minor danger the determination of the packaging or the packing group for a material is discussed in the classification section this will guide the offerer to know about the net quantity of the material that should be used proper shipping name and un number the complete set of the proper shipping name appearing in list of dangerous goods in aita and in ikao the dangerous goods list under the aita regulations for most of the shipping name they have a four digit number headed by un and preceded by id for example acetal a flammable liquid has been designated under un 1088 because it is a flammable liquid it is placed into class 3 and assigned to packaging group 2 net quantity limitations before the shipment of the dangerous goods the offerer must have knowledge about the passage that whether it is going to be a passenger carrying aircraft or cargo only aircraft the distinction is quite necessary and important to determine the net amount of quantity that can be permitted on the craft this distinction is readily apparent in ikao's dangerous goods list 
that is the list of dangerous goods in IATA since each entry has restrictions for passenger aircraft shipment and cargo aircraft packages prepared for cargo aircraft should be properly labeled with black and orange cargo aircraft only label with appropriate instructions and the documents should confirm that it's eligible for cargo only. A shipment that bears the cargo aircraft only label must fly on only that type of aircraft. However, a package authorized for passenger aircraft may travel on either type of aircraft. The acetal has two parallel packing instructions. Now I will discuss about packaging options. There are three usable packaging options. Firstly, specification packaging. Secondly, limited quantities packaging. And thirdly, accepted quantities packaging. There are specific quantity limitations for each material under each option. A brief discussion of the options follows as such specification packaging under the United Nations, the specification packaging are performance tested packaging. The testing specifications are addressed in section 6 and part 6 of IATA and ICAO respectively. Limited quantities packaging materials under packaging group 2 and 3 needs to be transported under packaging exceptions for limited quantities and are shown in IATA alphabetical order in dangerous goods. Accepted quantities packaging Certain dangerous goods which are quite small in quantity are given the privilege of being shipped without hazard labels with a particular provisions and are mentioned in section 2.7 of the IATA dangerous goods. Shown below are packaging instruction 305 and packing instruction Y305 extracted from the IATA dangerous goods regulations to illustrate the format used to present packaging options. Now I will discuss about marking and labeling. The shipper holds responsibility for marking and labeling of each package of dangerous goods. Each package must be of such a size that there is adequate space to affix all required markings and labels. There must be all the relevant information on the package or over the package with specified regulations and unnecessary ones should be checked and removed. The shipper is responsible for all the specifications and information to be provided on the package with correct usage. Each package of dangerous goods shall be labeled in accordance with the requirements specified in the technical instructions. The goods should be well marked and labeled with proper shipping name of its contents and when assigned the UN number and all other such significant markings for technical instructions. In addition to the language specified of each state, English should be present too. The offerers must understand that if they are responsible for the goods marking and labeling, then all the tests are related, should be properly done and tested. The last step of testing is very crucial. Recordings should be kept carefully as the Civil Aviation Authority may check and inspect about the proper functionality of the packaging process. As soon as package is completed, the labeling with the correct hazard information should be marked. It should be kept in mind 
that the generic NOS technical terms and proper shipping names and further the facts about dangerous elements are very much required to be presented on the package. Now I will discuss about documentation. The shipper is responsible for providing all the information related to the dangerous goods. The information may be provided on a prescribed declaration form, shipper's declaration for dangerous goods or where an agreement exists with the operator by EDP or EDI techniques for each and every shipment containing dangerous goods so specified or defined. For each shipment containing dangerous goods, the shipper must ensure that the correct form is only used with simple, legible and long lasting. Make sure that the form is signed by the operator and prepared by the legal regulations. The shipper must keep a copy of the shipper's declaration for dangerous goods for a period of minimum three months in accordance with the regulations. Also, additional information must also be kept about the dangerous materials and goods. If the shipper keeps all the information and documents in electronic media, then he or she must be able to reproduce it in printed form whenever asked. The information regarding the dangerous goods should not only be identified by the marked labels but also through shipping papers accompanying the materials. The airway bill that is the airline contract for carriage is not normally used to transmit the requirement or the required dangerous goods information. It gives full details of the shipment including name or address of shipper and consignee, aircraft type that is cargo aircraft only must also be noted on the airway bill when indicated. Airports of origin and destination, shipment type that is radioactive or non-radioactive, proper shipping name and technical name if appropriate, hazard class, UN oblique ID number, subsidiary risk if any, quantity and type of packaging, packing instruction, any special authorizations, additional handling information, shipper's certification. The IATA dangerous goods regulations contains examples of completed shipper's declarations along with the guidance on preparing the accompanying airway bill. An example of a completed shipper's declaration for dangerous goods is mentioned in the figure. Now I will discuss about the dangerous goods shipper's responsibility. The shipper is responsible for distinguishing, observing and identifying the dangerous goods in compliance with the regulations for safe and secure transportation. Identify and examine the materials as dangerous goods and then categorize them into the ninth class it falls in and if relevant assign them the three packaging groups. Now I will discuss about the misdeclared or undeclared dangerous goods. The operator or any other person working directly or indirectly on his behalf and accepts the goods and checks them and if finds that any misdeclared or undeclared goods shall submit a report to the Director Journal of DGC. The report under sub rule 1 
in addition to such other relevant information shall also contain the following information namely the name and address of person or operator reporting the name and address of the shipper date and location of detection of misdeclared or undeclared dangerous goods class or division of dangerous goods with the proper shipping name and quantity of such dangerous goods if any discrepancies arise or the director general if necessary can order for a check and investigate about the causes of misdeclared or undeclared goods and identify measures and solutions to avoid them in the near future now i will discuss about the provision of information the operator of the aircraft shall provide information in writing to the pilot in command as early as practicable before departure of the aircraft as required by the technical instructions in which dangerous goods are to be carried proper instructions are very important in the journey and should not be neglected inspection the director general or any other government authorized officer appointed by the central government at and reasonable time enter any place to which access is necessary and inspect any services equipment documents and records with a view to ensure compliance with the provisions of these rules the director general or any other officer authorized under sub rule may carry out investigation into alleged violations by an entity performing any function undertake rules and for such investigation the authorized officer may exercise the power under sub rule 1 dangerous goods accidents and incidents the pilot in command of the aircraft or the operator of the aircraft in aerodrome may have to give in writing if there is any incident or accident regarding the dangerous goods a report under sub rule 1 shall in addition to any other relevant information contain the following information namely the type nationality and registration marks of the aircraft the name of the owner operator and hirer of the aircraft the name of the pilot in command of the aircraft the nature and purpose of the flight the date and time of the dangerous goods accident or incident the place where accident occurred the last point of departure and the next point of intended landing of the aircraft the details of the dangerous goods on board the aircraft with their proper shipping name un number quantity etc the known cause of the dangerous goods accident or incident details of other cargo on board the aircraft the extent of known damage to the aircraft other property and persons on board the aircraft any other information required to be included by the director journal now i will discuss requirement of training no person is allowed to take the responsibility of transportation until and unless he or she has undergone proper training and is well aware about the dangerous goods and materials now i will summarize the entire module dangerous goods are materials and harmful objects that are hazardous 
to every other being and is risky for the passengers that are in aircraft. Materials and packages should be properly labeled and marked with proper instructions, warnings, use and information. It is the responsibility of the shipper and the operator for all the documents relating to the dangerous goods in addition to the markings and labelings. Personnel who are properly trained and professionally should only be assigned the responsibility of transportation of dangerous goods. The training should be checked and investigated by the officials and the superior authority. Thank you and have a great future ahead.